Hi everyone, welcome to tutorial 25 of our introductory Python for image processing tutorial series. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about visualizing your 2D images within Python. Now, in the last couple of tutorials, we talked about how to read images and how to save images to local drive. Now here, let's look at how to view these images in Python. And the reason for visualizing these images, especially the 2D images here in Python, is to get immediate feedback right after you perform certain operation. For example, if you load an image, if you read an image, and then you perform Gaussian smoothing, and then you want to see the effect of Gaussian smoothing right away, you don't want to save it as JPEG and then open it in your Windows viewer or some other uh, viewer, default viewer. You would like to get immediate feedback. So this is exactly the goal of this tutorial. So this is just visualizing 2D images to get instant feedback and not visualizing advanced uh, uh, you know, uh, images. So if you want to look at, for example, if you have, uh, if you're working with uh, Zen software, there are a lot of tools for visualization, right? So if you have multi-channel images, you can actually turn uh, each channel on and off and get like immediate feedback. If you want, you can design something like this within Python, but uh, uh, as researchers, that's not your primary goal. So if you want this type of immediate feedback, then uh, software like uh, Zen would be ideal. Again, if you have 3D images, you know, uh, uh, even better if you use appropriate commercial software packages and again Zen can actually handle this and you can actually uh, visualize these images but if you just have these images that you perform Gaussian smoothing on this and then you want immediate feedback then what are the best methods to do that so to learn that let's jump into our spider IDE and again as usual I've written a few lines of code to guide us through this tutorial uh, and I'll copy and paste relevant pieces of code as we go along. So step number one, of course, we are reading our images uh, using, in this example, io.imread. And if we run these two lines, uh, you should be able to see that this is a unsigned integer eight of whatever the dimensions are. Now to show these images, usually scikit image is not the right one, but uh, let's, go ahead and, uh, let's go ahead and have a look at it. io.imshow image you can see it right away okay so for a quick snapshot this is great uh, I primarily use either pyplot or OpenCV to visualize images this is also okay don't get me wrong please go ahead and uh, use this uh, if you want so there are three primary ways right scikit image pyplot OpenCV so now let's actually this is this is all I would like to talk about when it comes to scikit image all you need to do is io.imshow and image there are certain things you can tweak, like add in addition to this, and you can get that from uh, the Imshow documentation. Again, all the time, please go to the relevant page, like scikit image, look at io.imread page and see what else can you do while you're reading. io.imshow, what other parameters can you actually tweak? So now coming to pyplot, once the image is there, with pyplot, again, all you need to do is plt.imshow. I'm reading my matplotlib.pyplot as plt. This is, again, just to remind you, a shortcut of pyplot, okay? So that I can just use plt every time. This is very customary for uh, Python. So plt.imshow, and when I run this, it should look very similar to our previous output up there. Okay. Now, the reason I like PyPlot is you can actually define a lot of, uh, you can control how the display looks like. You can put multiple images. You can define the size of this image when it's displaying in the console. And by the way, both uh, scikit image and PyPlot, they're displaying images within the console, not like an external image. So uh, going back to uh, PyPlot, now let's actually uh, take this image and uh, apply instead of just imshow let's go ahead and add an additional line called cmap equals to hot this is basically a color map okay in what color do you want to show i don't think it will do any difference to this image because this image is a color image so the cmap applies to grayscale images so if you read a grayscale image i think i did that right there if you read a grayscale image let's paste those lines here so now I'm going to read an image as gray, okay? Because I put that line here, as gray equals to true. So my image as gray is a floating point 64 image, and it's 1104 by 1376. Again, I may or may not have covered this when I was talking about uh, reading images. When you use scikit image, 
if you don't put anything as gray equals to true or false and just do this the image is uh, a numpy array of all unsigned integers uh, and if you put as gray equals to true or false, then all the numbers would be floating point. Again, don't ask me why, but that is the case. In which case you may want to change the image to unsigned integer eight before saving it. But for visualizing, this should hopefully work for, uh, for uh, uh, matplotlib. So now I'm going to show this image, my gray image, with a color map called hot, cmap equals to hot. And there you go. So this is basically going from zero dark pixel all the way to bright pixel, which is I think a bright red or bright yellow. Now, if you want to display the same as jet colors, you know, this is another color map. A color map is uh, instead of going from black to white, what uh, a color map would you like to use? Is it black to red, black to blue? And uh, I should have done this exercise, but let's go ahead and type uh, pie plot color maps and then it should show up like all types of color maps you can go ahead and look at the documentation or you can just look at the uh, uh, image results of google search here and you can actually see various uh, color maps there are numerous color maps and you can just pick one for example let's actually pick uh, blues b-l-u-e-s it goes from white to blue so if we want to apply that then it is i think it's uppercase b so let's go ahead and run it. And there you go, that's your image. And based on the image, any of these actually make sense. The color map is used to just convey the message, the convey the message in an easy way. Hey, look at these colors. All the blues are my nuclei. Hey, look at this. All the reds is something else and all the greens mean something else. If there is a meaning to your image, then that's when you can use your color map to uh, colorize your images appropriately. Okay, so this is your pie plot. And uh, uh, again, I'll uh, probably spend some time talking about how to, in one of the upcoming videos, on how to organize these. But one of the reasons I like to use pie plot is uh, because I can arrange it. So here in this piece of code, again, don't be intimidated by a lot of this uh, code. It's very simple. The first line is I'm going to create a placeholder called figure of size 10 by 10. Okay, uh, in fact, I don't even remember bulk of this. I usually have a template, I copy this, and then I, I use it many times in other uh, parts of my code. So here, within that figure, I'm creating uh, a variable called axis one, axis two, axis three, and axis four. My axis one is figure, is this figure, dot add subplot which adds a subplot to this big figure. So think of this as defining a grid of size 10 by 10, and within that, I'm going to add a subplot. And when I say two, two, one, this is like saying, okay, I have uh, two rows and two columns, and this one goes at the first position. This one goes at the second position, third and fourth position. So the first one, I'm colorizing it in hot. The second one, jet, I'm, I'm colorizing the same image, and so on. So you, it can be many Im different images that you would like to display, but just for the fun of it, let's have a look at how this looks like okay so these are uh, various color uh, uh, you know palettes or uh, uh, color spaces here so the first one hot this one is jet and this one is our plain old gray image and this one is nipe spectral and you can explore it on your own time okay so uh, this is uh, another useful way of displaying your images using plt.imshow and uh, OpenCV is probably uh, the best one if you would like to open each image in, if you would like to open multiple images and each in different windows, not within the console. So let's have a look at how to do this in OpenCV. So let's clear the screen so it looks easy. So I'm importing CV2, which is OpenCV, and I'm uh, assigning two variables, gray image and color image. Obviously, I'm defining zero here, so I'm reading this as gray, and one here, I'm reading this as a color image. So let's execute these lines of code so we have our images ready, okay? So now let's go ahead and display, and both gray and color images are unsigned integers, okay? So now let's go ahead and display it, and the way you display is, let me copy and paste and explain each line, cv2.imshow then it displays it in an external window, and the title of the window would be whatever you give here. So in this case, the title of the window would be pick from scikit image import. In fact, I shouldn't have, uh, I shouldn't have uh, 
let's go ahead and do this deleted that line so let's go ahead and leave our scikit image import as is and also run these lines okay so the first image uh, is scikit image import and color pick from uh, a picture from OpenCV. So I'm going to show the color image and then I'm going to show the gray image. The goal of this is to show all three images at the same time. Now, if I run the code, I'll be stuck and then I have to kill the windows. There's a weird way uh, in, in OpenCV, you have to type how long you want the window to be displayed. So that is provided by cv2.wait key. Notice the K in uppercase, okay? So cv2.wait key. If you type 3000 here, then the window will be open for 3000 milliseconds, okay? And after 3000 milliseconds, which is three, three seconds, right? What do you wanna do? Destroy all windows, okay? Whatever windows, just go ahead and close it. So let's run this first. So here, you have color prick from OpenCV. Oh, they're all gone. <laughs> So three seconds is too small. That's why I usually put a value of zero here, which means until I close it, leave them open. That's all it is. So anytime you use cv2.imshow, always type these two by default, okay? So now let's go ahead and run this. Okay, so color pick from OpenCV looks great, okay? And what else do we have? We have the gray pick from OpenCV that also looks fine. Now let's actually look at the pick from scikit image import. Now the colors are swapped. You know, my red is uh, uh, changed to blue and so on. So this is the problem when it comes to reading an image using one library, but then displaying it using a different library. This happens with OpenCV. Again, I talked about this in the last tutorial. OpenCV handles these as BGR and not RGB. Okay, if you want, you can change those. If you want, uh, you can actually, uh, 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 do I have this here? In our previous tutorial, we converted our RGB to BGR. So I think it's, it's, it's worth opening that file and then go ahead and uh, uh, visualize this image one more time. So the way we do that is this line again, and let's actually convert our image. So let's convert our input image right there into from RGB BGR to RGB. So our input image goes here. And uh, let's go ahead and have a look at it. Let's run this code. And now, oh, it doesn't seem to change there. So let's actually go ahead and change this from RGB to BGR. I'm not even sure if this is going to work, but let's go ahead and try it. RGB to BGR and now let's run this one more time okay so this is this doesn't seem to uh, work right here pick from scikit image then uh, the best thing would be to display it using pyplot uh, I don't want to troubleshoot this as part of this video but I covered this topic in the previous tutorial anyway how to convert it from one space to the other okay uh, oh sorry Maybe I can troubleshoot this, sorry about this. So now if I, uh, uh, I was displaying the same image over there, so I should actually display image RGB. So let's see if this actually fixed it. Yeah, so here is your pic from OpenCV and here is your picture from scikit image and the colors look uh, fine. So uh, again, don't uh, forget to change the color spaces if you're visualizing or saving images in OpenCV and make sure you visualize it first to, ma uh, to make sure that the colors look okay and then go ahead and uh, save them onto your uh, local drive. So I hope uh, you found this tutorial to be useful. And again, we looked at uh, at least uh, three different ways of visualizing images, the 2D images on screen while you're actually coding. And uh, in the next tutorial, let's actually cover a different topic. And uh, until then, please practice and please get a hang of, please try to understand the implications of working with uh, floating point numbers and uh, working with library scikit image and OpenCV. How when you jump from one library to the other, how uh, the, in in the uh, unsigned integers and floating points and RGB to BGR can be a bit confusing initially and also a bit later on, but please get comfortable with that topic. Thank you very much.